I think it's, it's, it's absolutely essential not work for free because uh, once you work for free, it's just a piece of paper without any, any value for the clients. Business of Architecture episode 330. Hello and welcome back Architect Nation. I'm Enoch Sears. And this is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for building a practice that lets you do your best work more often. Today's episode is sponsored by Smart Practice, Business of Architecture's step-by-step business training program for architecture firm owners that shows you how to structure your practice so you can focus on doing your best work instead of getting bogged down with the complexity of running a business. Build the business you need to do the work that you want. Discover more by going to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash smart. Today, I speak with Andre Chivik. On today's episode, you'll discover how Andre and his partner, Mikhail Kristoff, have built a design-focused practice of 56 people in the Czech Republic by focusing on pursuing competitions. So without further ado, here's my interview with Andre Chivik. Andre, welcome to the Business of Architecture podcast. Thank you very much for the invitation. Glad to have you here. Give us give us a background of your studio. Tell us about your firm. Give us kind of the origin story so we can get to know what you've created here. Okay. Um, it's kind of... Um, it was very interesting beginning because we started with my uh, business partner, Michal Krzysztof, uh, 10 years ago. Uh, we gonna celebrate next month uh, our first decade. We started, uh, actually we were uh, schoolmates. We studied together at the Faculty of Architecture here in Brno. Maybe you know Brno uh, in, in America. I know that Brno is familiar as uh, uh, a chair uh, designed by uh, Mies van der Rohe. But Brno is actually a city we, I was born in. And uh, Miss van der Rohe uh, designed a villa to Genhad in our city, and that's the story of the chair because he designed a chair for villa to Genhad, the magnificent uh, family house, which uh, I live just uh, around the corner of this uh, this uh, tremendous villa. But back to the back, back, back to our studio, we, we we were schoolmates and we were also competitors. We uh, ha- because uh, Michal is one year younger than me, one uh, year, one month, and one day. What's kind of uh very interesting and i realized like five years ago that there's such a similarity (laughs) uh uh we were competitors we did several competitions uh during our study times and uh in uh, after this uh, um uh, rival period of our studies so we we went to get a practice um, abroad. Uh, I went to Vienna to PPAG studio, uh, very nice guys. Uh, I, I learned a lot uh, there. And Michael went to BRK Engels group in Copenhagen. Uh, that time big was a uh, very little studio. Actually they were uh, size of our studio. Nowadays they were 50 more or less. And uh, you know what was very interesting? We realized that um, we realized uh, there during our practicum uh, that uh, the architecture is not about one one man. It's not a one man show. It's a highly co- collaborative uh, 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 field. It's it's uh, you need uh, lots of different opinions, and uh, uh, once you have diversity uh, in the team the project is uh, then better and uh, we met in 2010 uh, in uh, venice during the venice biennale of architecture and around three o'clock in the morning at the bar we just tried to set up a, a studio and it was it was really interesting that even at the morning once we got sober again we realized that's that's maybe still a good idea <laughs> <laughs> so you actually remember the conversation and you still thought it was a good idea i i think we both remember like uh, 20 percent of the conversation but the core of the conversation was crystal clear and uh, even at the morning it was it was uh, taken as 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 a potential of collaboration 
So well, how how did you make how did you make the leap then from the firms where you're working? Because let's face it, you both had great jobs. You're at great firms. You're getting exposed to wonderful design collaborative environments. How do you go from something like that that's safe, secure, comfortable to the unknown? How did you make that leap? Uh, the thing was that we were still at the at the school and uh, we were uh, there as uh, young. Uh, not professionals, but students. We did uh, uh, Erasmus. Uh, that's the scholarship uh, here in Europe. You 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 can get some uh, little money to work uh, abroad. And um, the thing was that it was uh, time limited for half and actually for one year. And then we went back to the school and we finished our studies. So it was uh, actually mandatory to give up the career in big or ppag and uh, to finish our studies because otherwise our parents gonna be very very sad <laughs> that they invest lots of money and potential and and hopes into our study times and and we didn't finish so it was it was necessary to come back and uh, during the during the year of 2010 we finished our studies in the autumn and uh, we opened just before Christmas. We participated in first uh, co competition. We actually lost. It was the museum to Finland, beautiful gallery, which is all already built. Who ended up winning that project? That was uh, I cannot remember the name of the studio, but uh, it was okay. a little practice from Spain, from Madrid, Fair and enough. they won the competition and they started their career um, because they were also young, but not that young as we were. So they started uh, with that project. But the second competition we did uh, right after graduation, it was a competition uh, in Slovakia, the neighboring country. And we won the competition. It was for for uh, apartment buildings, and it was first uh, real commission. Actually, it looked like a uh, first uh, 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 real commission because we won, but we didn't didn't real uh, did, 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 didn't that, there was no follow up after the competition. Meaning that uh, sometimes happened that the competition uh, is just like um, uh, a tool for politicians or uh, developers to convince uh, the public that they are certainly active <laughs> but uh, at the end it's just like uh, it's a little scam on architects because architects uh, put their dreams and energy into the competition entry and uh, after the competition, you sometimes you realize that uh, it's just because somehow somebody got this uh, stupid idea to make this way of uh, self self promo. If mm. we're talking about uh, politicians, for instance, but it's not super common. But this one was this type of competition. But on the other hand, it was a really nice uh, experience for us because. Uh, we realized that we are able to collaborate in more than one project and what was also beneficial we got uh, the prize money it was around twelve thousand dollars it was not um, much money but uh, it was enough to spend uh, two months working on another project and we got a first commission afterwards okay so that project didn't end up you won the competition in slovakia yeah you it didn't end up going ahead because like you said it was it wasn't one of those kind of competitions they yeah. gave you the prize money which is great so you took that prize money and then you worked on another project was that another competition yes it was another competition and it was also um uh, uh very you know once you win uh you are on the wave of euphoria that uh, there's certain satisfaction even the there's no follow-up of the of the uh, uh, in the real project the the thing of winning competition is really nice thing it's like a it's it, it's it, it, it's a it's a proof that uh, the other architects are maybe not that 
innovative or i don't know we were we were stubborn and but we were also super proud that we won and and that was that that was actually extremely important for us to invest into another competitions because uh, the the feeling was that we still have a chance and uh, why not to try again when we once uh, won mm, beautiful how did the sec how did this this third competition go actually the third we lost the fourth we lost the fifth we lost and we almost bankrupt uh, we mm. had um, little support of our parents not financial one but we were living in our our parents place but uh, then we then then we got the first uh, client it's the it's a year 2011 and the first client uh because we were looking for first commission we did a lot of competitions but then we were looking for for first commission and the first commission was uh, actually super close to us because uh, during our study times we we did uh, many uh, student competitions and some of those student competitions were um, initiated by some private companies and uh, we when we were in the actually michael won this comp this student competition it was uh, he was uh, in the sixth semester it was a competition for uh, a coma company and it was the first year of the student competition they did it as the marketing for their products they produce um, uh, like a containers for living uh, 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 modules it's a kind of modular architecture and we wrote them an email that hello guys uh, that's that's we you know us you you like the project uh, uh, michael did uh, like uh, six years ago or five years ago for you and what about to collaborate and it was in the right moment because they were looking for an architect uh, to build their new cafeteria and cloth rooms um, of the for for the for for, for the um, uh, workers and we just went there and they get they, they gave us first contract and and first commission and it was like a kind of magic uh, i know that um, uh, it's it's 10 years ago or nine years ago and uh, looking back we did it almost for free we never did anything for free except uh, those competitions but uh, this one the, the fee was super low it was like uh uh, uh four thousand dollars or something so, something like that but it was only wow. uh, only uh um, architecture study it was uh, it was um, uh, the the first stage the other uh, the other construction drawings uh, were done by the company because they had uh, a department for for the detail design etc and uh, we were super happy that we are able to build something and it was not family house for a friend but it was a, a real commission uh, uh, in the value of uh, 1.2 million dollars so it was kind of reasonable reasonable building and it was not uh, uh, by some uh, uncle or, or or parents or or schoolmates but by a real company and we we got a really a really great business education by them what how so what did you learn about business from them it was really tough because we signed a contract and the contract was a uh, kind of surprise for us because uh, what, what, what was there there's a there's a penalization in the contract there was a that, that, that there was a, a schedule very tight one there was a, all those aspects of, of, of tough contract which uh, was uh, done by them we had no lawyer we had no uh, nobody to 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 help us with because we had no man, no, no no money for a, for a for a lawyer to to check the contract so we signed it and we were super scared actually i can remember the feeling while signing the contract we were happy that we we have the first client but on the other hand we were really like a super young child uh signing the 
yeah, it, it, it was not easy, but but uh, since then we know that the contract is a contract and it's something was mandatory for each project because we have uh, also friends and colleagues, they uh, freelance uh, till now and they uh, have serious troubles with the with the clients because they have no signed contract. Mm -hmm. So it, it was it was really nice, uh, nice, uh, nice uh, experience because of them because they they were developers and really big guys not that big as the as the, as the commission afterwards but uh, but still it was the first first touch with the real reality andre help me understand during so 2010 you started out and you did a number of competitions and you won the second competition i believe it was which was really exciting and it sounds like it really gave you guys a boost of confidence, of excitement, saying, hey, we can do this. We believe in yeah. ourselves as designers. And then you went ahead and, and you did more competitions, but then you didn't win, you didn't win, you didn't win, you didn't win. Was, was there any time where you were just, just felt so discouraged? I would imagine there would be that you thought, ah, is this going to work out? How are we going to make this work? I mean, how did you, what was that like for you? It was a very tough time. It was, it was uh, without any money. Uh, without uh, we, we put a lot of energy into 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 those uh, first competitions and it was uh, frustrating of course but on the other hand uh, we did uh, lots of competitions during our study times those student competitions and even even big guys competitions and it was something something we used to deal with because the ratio of uh, winning a student competition was one to five, let's say, uh, because th they were small and they were um, th there were maybe uh, ten or fifteen submissions. Now in the real competitions there were fifty or sixty submissions, uh, uh, and it was more tough to win. And the competition, of course, uh, the the competitors were were uh, big studios and and. Uh, super profiled uh, architects compared to us but uh, we kept this naivety and hope to to win another one what happened uh, at the end it was it was really really but it was really close to to bankrupt completely and to go back somewhere work for somebody else mm. So what was it? What was it that kept you going? That made you think, "We gotta. I'm not gonna give up. We gotta keep doing this." What was it that that kept you moving ahead, you and Mikhail? I think uh, it's kind of gamble, of course. Those architecture competitions, you need uh, certain uh, certain personality for that. And all the architects we talking to uh, are familiar. What does it mean to uh, participate in the competition? And what's the feeling to win? It's it's really like a bingo. It's it's the feeling once you get the result and uh, your name is on very front page that you are the winner. And thanks God it happened uh, uh, past ten years several times. Mm. Uh, mm. That's the that's the personal motor. But also also the second uh, second motivation was that we we wanted to have a big studio really really agency of uh, of um, more than uh, two people and without those competitions you will never ever get big contract or contract which uh, deserve uh, such a multidisciplinary and and uh, huge team so there was no other way to to give up okay so you were it sounds like your strategy for growing your practice in those early days was pursuing competitions. Yes, that's that's completely true. That's uh, because uh, here in Europe, um, um, you have uh, basically, I don't know how many, but let's try it. You have uh, private and public sector. It's it's two, two, two feet. And private sector, there are private clients like uh, uh, owners of um, uh, family houses and owners of uh, small companies and then uh, developers big uh, real estate companies they they 
they actually doing um, uh, competitions too, but they are not. Uh, they are slightly different compared to the public ones. And then you have public sector, and public sector have uh, public sector has two options to make a tender, which uh, they are selecting only by the lowest price. What's uh, completely ridiculous, but uh, some of private, uh, some of public investors are taking um, uh, more comfortable this way, or the nice, nice uh, uh, public uh, guys uh, are are willing to make up open public competition. And here in uh, in Europe or here in the Czech Republic, and it's it's, it's a phenomenon of, of of I would say entire Europe that. Uh, uh, even as a young studio, you are allowed to participate. You are um, free of charge. You are working for free, but you can participate. You don't need uh, any uh, completed project or uh, there's not uh, such a, a tough pre-qualification. There are also some uh, competitions with uh, pre-qualification and you have to prove that you built uh, certain buildings and you have uh, um, uh, the the uh all the 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 the, the money turn the the was 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 the was the world uh uh the that you got enough money past year uh mm -hmm. into in, in, into your studio and you have insurance etc but uh, some are open and those open competitions are even for big buildings and uh that that that's really nice opportunity for young architects to get a proper public beautiful uh contract got it did you do any other activities during that time so you're doing these these competitions for about a year was there any other activities you were doing to try to find clients other than of course competitions uh we first decade we were super naive and i love that kind of naivety because uh naivety is kind it's, it's an engine uh to think uh, out of the box. And I want to keep this naivety because naivety is really a uh, thing I love. And if it's not uh, too much, it's very healthy. So naivety. And we were not afraid to talk to people. For instance, uh, now we completed a winery in, in uh, South Moravia next to, ne next to Brno. And that's... Uh, Kind of spectacular uh, shape and a uh, little organic. Uh, uh, maybe we can talk about it later. But the way we got this client was that uh, I open open the newspapers, local newspapers, and I've seen there that those winery guys are willing to build a winery. They wrote some PR article about the uh, new type of wine and how that they bought a new, new, new some uh, acres of vineyards and that uh, they uh, also trying to get another uh, to uh, an, another winery into 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 their into their uh, company and then there was a little little sentence that we also plan to build a new house and we still looking for an architect and blah 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 and it was something like a like a red carpet for us. It was it was really like a, really those guys and and we we knew some guy from another another winery, and we also knew that uh, they are uh, competitors. But uh, on the other hand, they do collaborate a lot together because they they want to produce this uh, Czech Moravian wine as best as possible and their competition is not um, uh, on their fields but their competition is austria and france so we asked that lady uh, from another another winery if she's uh, a friend with uh, with those lahofer guys and she said of course do you wanna do you wanna meet let's write them an email and i said okay well why not and it was a time right after expo because so we did also um Back to the competitions, we won a, a competition for the Czech Pavilion for the World Expo exhibition in Milan 2015. And back to the now back to the winery story. And I wrote an email and it was like a 
hello uh, maybe you know us because we did uh, this pavilion in milan and what about to think about your project together and in five hours we got we got a reply and and in that email was why not so we met in our uh, in our studio we showed them our work and we offered them to make a not architecture study not the the schematic design but like a pre-study to show them what we what we do and what we can uh, think about their their winery and we ask for money but for little money but for money we as, as, as i mentioned it's i think it's, it's it's absolutely essential not work for free because uh, once you work for free it's just piece of paper without any any value for the clients that's our opinion and we we did a lot of work actually and we did several options we showed them our workflow and we we went through the those options with them we select the qualities of each and we collect those qualities into one particular uh, option at the end and they were happy and they said, hey guys that's really nice and we want to build that with you and it was that, that, that was something something very that there was a particular moment in our career because we realized that the proactivity that uh, of the architect can lead into the uh, into the contract and into the in, into the uh, today's built uh, kind of very expensive building because it as, as I mentioned the shape is not uh, it's not a box it's, it's it's a wave and it has an auditorium and and it has a cellar and 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 so so that was something something a, a proof of our our strategy that it works and it was mm -hmm. not uh, not strategy we we got somewhere in the school it was just like a okay let's be naive and and let let have the courage let's have a courage <laughs> a little bit mm. so that happened in what was that year 2016 or when did you get the winery project it was 2015 now it's 2020 and it took five years to complete it okay wow well, back in back in 2010, while you were doing so, you you obviously you did some outreach. You were looking at the newspaper. You just sent them a kind of got an introduction, sent them an email. Back when you first started, were you also doing that? What were you doing in addition to the competitions? Were you reaching out to people via email? What what other activities were you doing to try to get projects? There's always uh, always story behind each uh, each step we did. For instance, um, here in Brno, uh, there was a. Uh, there was a central bus station in terrible condition, in really terrible condition. And uh, while studying, I was dating with a girl from uh, Uherské Hradiště. It's the it's, it's a city uh, like a 50 kilometers um, um, distance from Brno. And to be always because I until now I have no license, I, I, I'm not able to drive a car. And uh, we 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 always we went to uh, her sponge place. We. We spent some time waiting for the bus in that terrible, terrible bus station. It's a huge bus station. It's a, a bus station in the uh, in the size of of a square. And I was I was just wondering why does it look like that? It was really something not twenty first century. It was even eighties in in in. In, in communist uh, in, in the communist period uh, it was real it looked like that it, it, it was really really wow awful and then we met with Michal and we we realized that we as uh, architects can make something we can make a sketch we can make a sketch and to send to the owner because the owner was private. Uh, we had uh, after the Velvet Revolution in the 90s uh, when the when the regime fell. We there was a huge wave of privatization. All the public uh, things were selling almost for free to um, private investors with the hope that they will care better um, than the state. And that's the reason. Uh, why the why the biggest bus station here in Brno is in uh, private uh, private hands, and mm. the thing was that uh, we made a sketch. I, I said we never work for free, but this was this was for free, and we sent the sketch 
to the to the owner and it was a rendering it was a cgi very simple the the it, the, the the bus station is a one big roof with a, a, a bus parking on top of it it's very brut beautiful brutalistic architecture it's very very strong in very bad condition and we sent them with uh, an email it was 2011 2012 with an email hi guys what about to make a little change of of, of your of your bus station because it's not as you probably know it's not uh, good enough and and uh, there was no no answer but we put it on our facebook page and uh, some journalists uh, uh, from uh, uh, from the local newspapers from the tv actually from from the czech tv uh, local local czech tv got an idea to make a make a uh, uh, make a little little video with us uh with a reportage to put uh, in, in, into the news how terrible the conditions are and what we did and that we we didn't got any any answer yet and we did it it was very controversial con controversial the, the the owner of the of the bus station was really pissed off because we went through the we went through the the bus station and we shown all the aspects of 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 dirtiness and uh, and 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 we shown the the worst condition of of entire complex but the local politicians seen the reportage the 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 the, the video in news and gave us a uh, a call and hey guys the study is nice let's try to convince the owner to make something something with the with the conditions of of the of the bus station we met with those guys they they, they wanted to shoot us because <laughs> it was it, it was really controversial to to tell them that uh okay check this out it's it's not good enough and it's uh, not good at all and even uh, through the through the through the news through the public news everybody was uh, suddenly aware that uh, okay those young guys are trying to make a change and nobody is even re replying their, their their emails so the owner was really pissed off but then we find a way how to uh, get some money from uh, public to private because suddenly it was not only private uh, um, private uh, thing to change it it was already public one because we made this uh, huge uh, negative PR wave, and we convinced them. Also, by because of the uh, public-private partnership investment, but we did it, and now it's uh, like a three months before the opening. It's under under construction and it's happening. It took like eight years, but the activism of uh, our studio was actually very successful, and I'm very proud of it. Mm. Congratulations on that. Thank you. <laughs> now, you you have a large you have a relatively large team right now. Did you say the team members that you have, what's the size of the studio at the moment? We are 56 now. Okay, 56, 56. F 56, yes. Yeah. And how did you make the leap to go from you and your partner to hiring, getting enough, because we know it takes money to get an office, it takes money to hire to hire staff. How did you make that leap? What what allowed you to do that, to actually start building a team in a collaborative environment? We, there was a, there was a particular moment uh, in 2012 that we got an invitation from uh, Penta Investment, that's the biggest real, uh estate developer here in uh in 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 the country in the czech, czech republic and it was it was a invited competition for valtrovka district it's kind of green city in prague and it was really there's another story behind it if you wanna if you wanna listen to the story uh let's hear it uh are you familiar with uh, pecha kucha night I'm not. Pecha Kucha Night is the format of 20 uh, to 20 pictures. You have 20 seconds for 20 pictures. 20 seconds. Okay, I misunderstood. Sorry, I misunderstood. 
Okay. Pechachka, Pechakucha, yeah. I, I am familiar, so it's correct. Pechakucha. And you have um, two ways how to participate in Pechakucha. The first way is to be invited, and the second way, uh, second way how to participate is to send them an email to the organizers and to get an invitation. And uh, as far as I did my my uh, practicum in Vienna, I knew that uh, the organizer of the Pecha Kucha night in Vienna is an architect. And it's kind of very nice architect. So we send them uh, our profile, and uh, he just said, "Okay, please come. It's tomorrow. Why not?" So we 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 did this Pechakucha night, and this architect was uh, running out of out of time uh, in a competition to Graz, that is the second biggest city in Austria, and he has not enough. Uh, he had not enough cap capacity in, in in their studio so he asked uh, us to help him with uh, the competition entry and the competition entry we did it we lost it was a third prize but uh, it was kind of success for Czech architect to get a third prize uh, in Austria or in abroad generally speaking we publish it here in in uh, uh, local magazines, uh, architecture newspapers, and 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 we publishing a lot. But but we publish it, and like a month after publishing of Green City Graz third prize of Chubik and Christoph, the manager of Penta Investment was looking and searching on Google, and I know it because we are friends now. And he told he told me this 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 attitude. And he he just put into the into the Google like a green city architects Czech Republic, and we were the first. And he and we got the invitation because of this uh, this activity we did because of this uh, Austrian competition and uh, Pecha Kucha night in Vienna, <laughs> because of that very very first email. We got this competition and they were surprised that we are like a 26, 27 years old guys. The the super super owner, the owner of the of the of the company, the billionaire uh, Marek Dospiwa once went to the um, uh, pre-final presentation of the competition submission and he asked us where is our boss. He thought that we are <laughs> uh, we we are some some uh, some trainers trainees of of the studio and we said no that's we, that that. We are the the authors, but it was such a huge opportunity for us because the competition was completely different. That there were uh, uh, already architects like a twenty years later, completely different generation, and we we did a kind of naive design, but we put lots of energy into the design, and and at the end we won. And we signed a contract with the biggest developer here in the Czech Republic. Super tough contract, and we built it. And that was the that was the particular moment when we opened the studio. Actually, we were mm, so that gave that gave you enough funds to then hire people. Yeah, exactly. We had some yeah. people uh, constantly. We started at four. We were two founders and two guys. They were helping us with, but uh, they were not. Uh, expensive because they were students and they they they, they helped us we 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 worked together like uh, six seven years later on but uh, but yeah that was the first first thing and then you had so you had you had some students did you at that time did you did you bring on project architects how did you complete the technical aspects of the project did you have that knowledge in house no, uh, until now, actually, the 56 members of the studio uh, are architects only, beside the back office. We have uh, seven people in the back office we, who's responsible for business development, PR, um, uh, those all office office things, um, and then uh, we have the, the rest, the 49 uh, members are architects only, and uh, we do outsource the the other other parts of the documentation um into uh civil 
for engineering uh, companies as boarding okay. to So you, you, or... your firm currently, you do, you do a lot of the upfront work, you do the design work all the way through to a certain yeah. point, and then you outsource the production of the documents to other companies, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the thing is that uh, we are in touch with the project, not in touch, we are deeply in, uh, in the project until the completion. But uh, we have from each stage of the, uh, of the project only a particular part, the architecture part. And the rest uh, is on, on, the, on, the, on the other companies. Okay. And so do you do the construction documents for the architecture part or do you outsource that as well? The actual drawings no, for, for building for the for, for the architect uh, depends of the wish of the of the client. Some clients uh, want to outsource because they have another uh, another um, uh, company uh, which is uh, more deep into. Sometimes uh, the 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 um, uh, the company. Um, uh, some of our clients are construction companies, so they have their department. But uh, majorly, uh, we do architecture part in the house. So uh, that's okay. the that's the that, that's the biggest work in our studio. The, the architecture part from the uh, uh, architecture from the from, from the um, uh, um, uh, sketch design from the first sketch to the detail design. The architecture part is uh, in the house. Mm. Great. What do you find works for you right now for getting your commissions? It's. I would say we still do a competitions a lot. Because mm -hmm. uh, the public buildings are are really uh, something that's the cherry on the cake, I would say. Yeah. Mm. But uh, we are kind of known here in uh, Czech and Slovakia, so we are getting lots of uh, invitations for the uh, private uh, competitions from the real estate sector. It's at least one at in 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 a month and uh, then we are still proactive because uh, we're building the portfolio not only for the local market but uh, we are looking for some uh, other projects in other countries and the portfolio is kind of uh, um what i'm proud of is that the portfolio is extremely diverse we we had an opportunity to design extension of prague airport what's uh, uh, a one billion dollars project it's really huge and the extension that's the work for next uh, decade it wasn't published yet and we have no pictures for that but uh, uh, we, we have a lot of pictures but we are not uh, allowed to to publish it but it's uh, it's a huge project and also what we also do is the tallest building in the Czech Republic. It's a skyscraper in Ostrava, 240 meters. And then some, and, and those, those two things are completely different because the, the airport is horizontal. It has a facade, uh, almost one kilometer, like a thousand meters. I don't know how to count it in feet, but uh, it's very long and uh the the tower it's 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 uh dealing with uh with the wind and the shading of the of the neighboring buildings and it's completely different different story so that's what we what we did so far and now we're getting some first touch uh first, first, first invitations from germany from france and it's getting properly international we just lost the competition in Russia it was a campus Meccano won actually that was really nice because we got a, a invitation to first uh, you, you are you familiar with what does it mean Champions League uh, in football in soccer that's the yes mm -hmm. so th there yeah. are some uh, uh, competitions uh, in architecture field uh, we call it Champions League and there's always Meccano mm -hmm. or OMA or uh, BAG or the Hadid Studio, and we finally got this uh, uh, this invitation for first Champions League project that was to Russia, yeah. and Meccano won, but uh, but I think we can we can deal with it. <laughs> and you're pretty happy that you're in that league now. You're in the Champions League. We are not well, there, but, 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 but we got the smell of it. <laughs>
Yeah. You got the taste of it. You, yeah, you, just enough. Really okay. <laughs> well, Andre, thank you so much for joining us and telling us your story today as much as we could get into here on the Business of Architecture podcast. Thank you very much for having me. And that is a wrap. I hope you enjoyed my conversation today with Andres Chivik. And I wanted to let you know, if you want to find out more about the work and see some of the projects that we talked about today, you can go to chivik christophcom So I'll spell that out. It's chybik the letter K-R-I-S-T-O-F, as in Frank, dot com. And they're based out of the Czech Republic. Today's episode is sponsored by Smart Practice, the world's leading step-by-step business training program that's helped over 103 architecture firm owners structure their existing practice so the complexity of running a business doesn't get in the way of the architecture. Because you see, it most likely isn't your design skills or your architecture skills that are holding you back. It's the complexity of running a business, managing projects and people, dealing with clients, contractors, and money. So if you're ready to simplify the running of your practice, go to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash smart to discover the proven, simple, and easy to implement smart practice method for running a practice that doesn't get in the way of doing exceptional architecture. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the hosts, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.